Thank you for joining us. We are on location at the Hilton Orlando and we are honored to have with us today Israel's Minister of Environmental Protection, Mr. Gilad Erdan. He is visiting the United States to address the Jewish National Fund National Conference and will share his thoughts on the importance of the JNF and how he sees the present and ever-changing situation in the Middle East following these messages. How does a passionate dream of a few become the vibrant reality for many millions? How does an idea grow from a visionary seed to a visionary state? How rewarding does it feel to be part of all of this? KKLJNF, the Jewish National Fund, was always there, in the root and heart of it, cultivating Zionist ideas and planting trees purchasing ground for settlement, or laying the ground for development. 110 years of soul, reconnecting a people to its soil. When the idealist Chalutzim started flocking to their ancestral land, yet had no land, it was KKL JNF that bought the fertile Jezreel Valley for them to start in an ancient homeland a new life, becoming a growth engine of the state to be. Another mission was shaping and securing Israel's pre-state borders with operations like Choma Migdal and 11 settlements in the Negev. Years later, KKL JNF continued transforming the arid landscape by building water reservoirs, creating Action Plan Negev, running agricultural R&D stations, and utilizing new planting techniques to make the desert bloom. Bringing the brown of the land to life with the green streak at the heart of KKLJNF was complemented by painting Israel blue with Project Clean Up the Streams. To battle the nesting grounds of the malaria mosquito, KKLJNF took on the national project of drying the Hula Swampland and Lake, thus creating much needed land for agriculture. Being a constant caretaker, 40 years later in the same location, a second national project is undertaken. Repairing extensive ecological problems caused by drying the swamps, KKLJNF rehabilitated the Hula wetlands, creating the Agmon Hula Park, now one of the planet's most important and thriving bird sanctuaries. Sadly, in the land of milk and honey, water is sparse, and forest fires are a constant threat. So KKLJNF vigilantly defends its green artwork, keeping Israel's green lungs safe. Even after more than 240 million trees planted, KKL JNF never stops looking for new challenges, continuously improving Israel's future and quality of life. Community forests blossom, and the environmentally friendly approach to developing parks and recreation spots, walking trails, and many new bicycle routes is making the green spaces of Israel more compelling and accessible for everyone. Ecological Zionism projects bond young Jews from the diaspora to Israel. When they grow up, these young people will become branches of international KKLJNF, helping us to continue our distinct path. They will be the next generation of you, our many active friends and supporters around the world, ambassadors of Israel and the Zionist idea. You are our roots that enable us to branch out and reach out. Together, we make Israel a better place for its residents and those who have yet to come, taking care of our earth, water, trees, and people. KKLJNF, looking forward to many more years of green action. With us now is Gilad Erdan, Israel Government Minister. It's a pleasure and privilege to have you on the Shalom Show. Hi, thank you for having me. Sir, tell us why you're here in the United States. 
Uh, for me, as a Minister of Environmental Protection of Israel, it is very important to cooperate with the green organization. And in my eyes, uh, the JNF is the greenest Zionist organization around the world. So uh, it is important for me to support the activities that uh, JNF uh, is promoting in Israel. So that is uh, why I'm here. So we are witnessing a dramatic time in history with the ever-changing situation in the Middle East. The so-called Arab Spring, some people say, is becoming a winter. What are your thoughts on the current situation generally in the Middle East? Uh, as you said, uh, they called it, some, some people called it uh, the Arab Spring, but uh, what we are witnessing is uh, something that is quite frightening because uh, we see the, uh, the countries surrounding Israel becoming uh, more and more uh, Islamic, uh, Islam, new Islamic regimes like uh, what happened for example in Egypt and those people who dreamed that we are going to have a new Middle East and maybe tomorrow we can uh, dismantle the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force of course, they must understand that they made a huge uh, mistake. So in Israel, the conclusion is that whenever you uh, promote a policy, you have to be very, very, very careful uh, because you have to be dependent only uh, in yourself, in your, in your own uh, abilities. It's a tragedy that in the Middle East, Israel's right to exist is not recognized by its neighbors except for the peace treaty we have currently still, hopefully forever, with Jordan and Egypt. And so much more could be achieved in mutual cooperation and peace, such as what we see with the Arab Art Institute. So much more could be done. But actually, it seems that the threats against Israel are increasing. What are your thoughts with regard to that? I think that uh, Israel is a world uh, leader in uh, environmental protection uh, technologies and uh, natural reserve conservation. For example, if you look at uh, uh, water, uh, uh, water uh, recycling, Israel uh, recycles uh, almost 80% of its effluent and we use it again for agriculture. Of course, for countries who who uh, suffer from uh, water scarcity, uh, those technologies are very, very important. This is uh, an example. How can our neighbors uh, could uh, gain from, from mutual relationship with, uh, with, with Israel? So it is a tragedy that uh, Israel uh, must be dependent only on itself, on its technologies, uh, on its uh, innovation, uh, we are doing everything we can to be uh, independent, but if uh, the Middle East uh, will be a place, would be a place that uh, we have peace, so we have, everyone can gain from it. So it is a, tra a tragedy, as you said. I apologize for background noises. We are doing this interview at the Hilton Orlando Hotel, and there are people running around in the background. Sir, I'd like to ask you the following question: Up until 1967. The Arabs had Gaza, the Golan Heights, the West Bank, Sinai, and they refused to recognize Israel's right to exist back then. People are asking, why would they accept today what they refused to accept back then if Israel supposedly were to give even more concessions? Why would they accept it today when they did it in the past? First of all, I don't know if they will accept <laughs> our existence uh, uh, in the Middle East. Uh, you should ask them. But uh, I must say that uh, in 1948, <coughs> when they refused to uh, recognize the, uh, the UN resolution uh, to establish a Jewish state, uh, and as you mentioned, in 1967 again, and in 1973, and if, even after many, many uh, concessions that uh, Israelis prime minister wanted to do, to make, uh, of course, time is passing and uh, Israel is becoming a fact. Israel was a fact in our eyes, but I believe that and I hope that new Arab uh, leadership will come and they, and they will understand, one day they will understand uh, that Israel is here, not here in the Hilton, but uh, <laughs> in, the, in the Holy Land, and it's there to stay forever. 
and uh, as uh, fast uh, and as early they, as they will recognize it, uh, people, uh, you know, it, it, the question is how many more people will have to to uh, to be killed or inju- injured until the Arab leadership will understand it. Well, President Sadat of Egypt was murdered for the crime of making peace with Israel. Yes. And there was peace with Egypt up until now and hopefully will continue. But how do you see the new movement in the Middle East? We see terrorism in Benghazi, uh, American ambassador killed and so forth. Do you see the Middle East after all becoming more stable and more peaceful? I think that uh, no one can know right now. Uh, we, we saw some people uh, like Thomas Friedman, for example, that when he saw the demonstration in the Tahrir circle, uh, he was very happy. He was, uh, he was totally sure, uh, convinced that uh, democracy is, uh, is coming everywhere. But as we saw, reality is totally different because the Muslim Brotherhood is quite, quite organized, not only in Egypt, but in many other places in the Middle East. Of course, in Israel, we are always uh, open uh, for peace. We want to live in peace with our neighbors. But first of all, our obligation is to, is to the security of the people of Israel. So as long as our neighbors will keep uh, the peace treaties, and we want to keep uh, those peace treaties that you mentioned with Egypt and with uh, Jordan, of course, we'll do anything we can to keep those peace treaties. For example, uh, we agreed to change some of uh, the, the terms in the peace uh, treaty with Egypt in order to help the new regime in uh, Egypt uh, to deal uh, or uh, to confront uh, the terror organizations in the Sinai Desert. An interesting point I'd like to share with you is there is this strange fact that Israel is held to a higher standard. The world media criticizes Israel. Uh, if a problem occurs, they make a big deal out of it. When worse problems occur in other countries, it's hardly new- uh, newsworthy. What is being done to promote the achievement of the State of Israel and all that Israel stands for? From that point of view? Well, it, as, as you said, it is uh, quite frustrating to see the huge gap between how Israel is maybe, the, of course, the only democracy uh, in the Middle East. In Israel, everyone have, uh, has equal rights, women, homosexuals, minorities, everyone. And this is the only place in the Middle East. And even though the criticism, as, uh, as uh, you can see in all the inter- international media, of course, is uh, totally shows Israel different from what it is. In Israel, of course, we are trying to take care of ourselves and, and to keep those values uh, which I mentioned. But we are not taking care only for ourselves. We are trying to, to bring... Uh, new technologies, uh, innovation to many other places around uh, the world and to, to make the world become a better place. As one of the most important companies in Israel is called uh, a company that is encouraging the use of uh, electric vehicles. Uh, you can find uh, our technologies in uh, medicine, in every computer, in every cell phone. And those problems, uh, existential problems like uh, water scarcity uh, and uh, clean air that the world needs, those are the technologies that we are investing in research and development in order to find sh- solutions that can be used uh, around the world. So uh, it is frustrating, but nevertheless, we will continue uh, to do it because we believe that Israel must serve as a light unto the nation and to help also other nations as well. Thank you so very much for being with us. Let's hope for a better Thank future you. for all of us and the Middle East, the entire world, of course. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, sir. I'll be right back.